Combining vectors using the graphical method is only as accurate as the drawing itself, in other words, not very. Fortunately, most of the vectors we encounter in AC circuits differ in their directions by 90 degrees or 180 degrees. In this case, we can use our knowledge of right triangles to combine these vectors both quickly and accurately. Consider two vectors x and r oriented perpendicular to each other. To combine the vectors, using the right triangle method, first move the vectors into standard position. The set of coordinate axes are usually not shown. Next, draw a rectangle using the length of the two vectors for size. Now the resultant vector, z, can be drawn using the graphical method. Notice that the relationship between vectors r, x, and z can be represented using a right triangle. Each side of the extracted right triangle is labeled to represent the length or magnitude of the corresponding vector in the vector diagram. The vector notation has been dropped since the direction of each vector is clear from the triangle. The angle theta is measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. The fact that right triangles can be used to combine perpendicular vectors is very useful since we already know quite a bit about right triangles. And, as we will see shortly, AC circuit variables can be represented by perpendicular vectors. So AC circuit analysis is based on solving right triangles. Recall that the sides of a right triangle have generic names, which represent their relationship to the angle theta. The side labeled R in our triangle is referred to generally as the adjacent side. The side labeled X in our triangle is referred to generally as the opposite side. And the side labeled Z is called the hypotenuse of the right triangle. It's much easier to focus on the fact that these sides are variables that represent the lengths or magnitudes of vectors rather than on the labels themselves. One important mathematical tool for solving right triangles is the Pythagorean theorem, which gives the relationship between the lengths of the three sides of any right triangle. Stated using the variables in the right triangle shown, z squared is equal to r squared plus x squared. This fundamental relationship can also be written in vector form as z equals r plus x, where z, r, and x are all written as vectors. The other mathematical tool for working with right triangles is a set of trigonometric functions relating the ratios of the lengths of the sides to the angle theta. These are functions of the angle, not functions of the sides or their ratios. The first is the cosine function, read as the cosine of theta is equal to r divided by z, or the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Next is the sine function, read as the sine of theta equals x divided by z. That's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And last for our purposes is the tangent function, read as the tangent of theta equals x divided by r, which is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Also useful are the inverse trigonometric functions, which undo their corresponding trig functions. These are functions of the lengths of the sides of the triangle and not functions of theta. They are used to find theta when the lengths of any two sides are known. First is the arc cosine, read as the angle whose cosine is r over z. Notice the two different ways to write this function. Both are correct. Also, the parentheses are optional in both forms, since the fraction bar is already grouping the numerator and denominator into a single argument. We also have the arc sine, read as the angle whose sine is x over z. Last, the arc tangent function is used to find the angle whose tangent is equal to x over r. The relationships listed here are the tools you will need for working with AC circuits. Your success in understanding AC fundamentals will depend on how well you can work with these mathematical tools.